I sanded that down, bondo down. Let me show you what I use. I basically use this right here with some three inch, just like a little Harbor Freight deal. I think this is a polisher, but you can use it, put the power on it, use it as a sander. Comes in handy. 80 grit uh, hook and loop paper. I use the 80 grit to uh, shape it up and get it close. And then I use the 220 by hand to smooth it out a little more. What's up there people, Hunter Smoke Riders here. And nothing spectacular going on this weekend. Just a grimy, dirty job. But before I go over there and let you know what's going on, let me give you a clear understanding about where I'm starting and why this is really taking a lot, way longer than expected. You come over here, this side, only thing I've done in this side is purple power and power wash and pull the drums off. So I'm doing one side at a time. You come over here, you see this, this seam sealer is what it's called. On the other side, there was a big old crack from here to about here where water could possibly seep in, seep in, should I say. And then I didn't really like how all this looks here. See, it looks all right here, kind of, but then you get over here and it's like very sloppy. I don't know what this is, but I decided if I'm going to take this off, I might as well take that off too. Now, this job I'm doing here is not spectacular. It's awful uh, messy and dirty, and it's really not nothing I'm going to film because there's stuff that flies everywhere. But this is where I'm at with it, man. Just getting this down to metal so I can get ready to put this paint on here. It's not perfect. This is just the first stage of this. But you can still, you can kind of see where that crack is. So because <laughs> this side, man, this side has been a problem side for me. Because this side was cracked, I decided I'm just going to grind that all the way out. Grind that stuff out there. Remember that nasty stuff? Grind that all right here. Might as well, I'm sanding this all out anyway. I still got to do a little bit more work to them holes where the bondo's at. The one thing I'll say, man, the back is a lot harder to do than the front. Just trying to make a slow crawl forward. So, all right, people, just give me a little quick little update of what's going on. I'm getting, I'm getting there, baby step by baby step. I am uh, moving forward on the progress. Okay, what's up there, people? Hunter Spoke Riders here. It's sun starting to go down, so I'm gonna get this going real quick. Got a few more. It's the last day. This is New Year's Eve, last day of 2020. Got a few hours to go and be done with 2020, but I'm out here tinkering with the old Tahoe parts. I'm still back going with the Tahoe. I'll give you more details on that later, but these are the, the brand new heavy duty drum brakes from AC Delco. They were in raw metal. I just painted them the exact same paint as I used on the front brake calibers. Go back and look at the old videos if you want to see what kind of paint I used. I didn't sand it. I didn't scuff it. I just cleaned it with some a little bit of uh, cleaner and painted it blue. And I'm just going to give you a quick little update. Never mind that, the Merrill Camino parts. But I'm going to just give you a quick little update of where I'm at with the Tahoe. I did paint the passenger side. I got it all done up and ready to go. I didn't really film that part because it's basically the same process as I did on the front. Use the same paint, use the same gun. So if you wanna know how I did it, go back and look at the old videos in the front. I got all brand new parts for the drum brakes, all AC Delco. I got the, the brake shoes. You look in here, I got all new springs. I got a brand new wheel cylinder, a brake cylinder. Everything is brand new and ready to go. I use the same seam sealer I used on my El Camino. I ended up using it for this. I had some other seam sealer that's supposed to be better from uh, Eastwood, but it was on back order for like almost three months. I got tired of waiting on it, so I said I can't wait no longer for the seam sealer. So I just used the El Camino. It seemed the paint seemed to stick okay for the El Camino, so I said the hell with it. I'm gonna use it on the old Tahoe too. That's how I did this side. I still have to do the driver's side. Now the driver's side I'm going to do a little bit different uh, than the passenger side. This driver's side, I pretty much, the only thing I've done to this is power wash it or spray it down with purple power and power wash it. That's the only thing that's been done. So as you see, it definitely needs some bricks. I, I did learn a lot. That's why I always like doing it one side at a time because I did learn a lot doing that passenger side first. So now I know what to do and what not to do try to make it a little bit easier on me. 
But this side here, I realized the first time I did this, and I showed you guys, I got a video of how to disassemble the drum brakes. On that video I did things, I realized the hardest way possible. Well, one thing I understand now is, I got all new parts, so there's really no reason to struggle like I did last time with trying to get the springs out and try to take things apart so neat and so delicately, delicately to where nothing broke because it doesn't matter because most of the stuff I got is gonna be new anyway. So now. Now that I know better, I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna do it the easy way. And let me show you how. Okay, first things first, getting these springs out of here. That's, main, that's the main part of the struggle. I'm gonna use this bad boy right here and do it the easy way. Oh, well, that's a fail. Let me see if I got something a little bit more beefier. All right, let's try these. See if I have any better luck with these. Nope, that spring is a little thicker than I thought. Either that or my grip strength ain't as strong as I hope it would be. I believe I know now what I need. These two things ain't it. I think I'm gonna go somewhere and buy some more tools. As you seen earlier, this and this did not work for trying to cut that spring off. Now normally, I would just use something like this. Use this air power little saw, put the tip of it on it, and just cut it off and be done with it. In 2021, I'm trying to try to do things differently. I've got a big uh, collection of tools that run off of air. Even though it runs off of air, it still takes electricity to run the air compressor. And I have a lot of tools that either run off of air or run off of electricity. 2021, I'm trying to focus more on hand tools that don't run off, don't need electricity to use them. Instead of using this, I went out and bought this. Some small bolt cutters, 14 in. And what's crazy is I've never had bolt cutters before. I wanted to get a smaller one to try to get up in there. And let's try to get up in there and see what happens. Let's see if this uh, works out and makes it a lot easier. Got that one off, easy peasy. And I already got this spring and this bracket new. So I ain't worried about that. Now let's see how I do this does in the bigger one. Oh yeah, goes to show man, you gotta have the right tool for the job. It makes life oh so much easier. Huh, seems like this one's holding on for dear life here. Oh, there we go. It did make that one easier. So now I could just pull this off like this. And there we go. I got uh, both the brake shoes off, well kind of off, this one's hanging right here. Only thing left to do now is to pull that wheel cylinder off. Last time I made the mistake by painstakingly getting this bracket off of this uh, emergency brake cable. I thought I had a new bracket with the kit. Come to find out I did not have a new bracket with the kit. I had to put the old bracket back on. And as long as it took me to get this off without, you don't want to cut this one. I realized I should have never took it off in the first place because it took me even longer to put the thing back on. So this time I figured out that if I pull this pin off, the whole shoe will come off and it's a lot easier to get that pin off than it is to take this uh, spring off of this bracket. So I'm gonna leave it on there this time. Now, if you flip this over like so, this little bracket right here, you gotta get that off. That's the only thing really holding this bracket to that shoe. I'm just trying to basically spread them apart. I'm not really trying to bend them up, but for some reason it's going up. Last time I did this, I did it on the bench in the garage, so it's kind of difficult to do it like this at this angle to hold it down. I had it clamped into a vise. I'm gonna try and make it happen. I got these vise grip style clamps on here just so I can have a way to hold this better without actually have to hold the part. So I can kind of just grip it like that. There it is. Boom. I pulled that one little pin, and then these two pieces came out the bottom. These three pieces, or the factory pieces, you might want to hold on to these. Now, the kit I got did come with these three pieces, brand new, but the factory ones do look a little bit more beefier, so that's why I was trying to be careful and not break anything taking this off. Now, this piece here, as you see, it's a little bent, right? But all I gotta do is take it to the vise, or take it to the table, and hammer it back flat again, and I can use these three pieces with the new setup. That's what I did with the other side. And this is what's going, this is gonna be the after. This is what it looks like when it's all said and done.
minus the drum ain't on there yet but you've seen them i painted them blue 2021 we back on the old two-door obs chevy tahoe all right people i have my suspicions that uh this fender flare was broken and after pulling it off the tahoe it is confirmed indeed fender flare is broke up that is supposed to be molded onto the back of the fender flare so i'm definitely as you see here that's no good so i'm definitely have to replace this fender flare there's no even point in trying to document this up so i'm trying to find a factory style fender flare somewhere hopefully it's not on back order for 10 years but guess what else i found just because i don't have enough work to do already and just to make matters a little harder i found this little jewel waiting for me once i pulled the fender flare off yeah that's not supposed to be there either i'm thinking this might be a bullet hole because it kind of goes in here and then it kind of hits and pushes this out right here but then let me show you what i found on the inside okay inside that hole there inside i found this right here i don't know i'm no forensic scientist but that kind of looks like a bullet i'm not sure what this little stuff is in the middle it's a little black stuff it might be a piece of the fender i know my brother didn't have nothing to do with this so this right here is courtesy of the previous owners before this uh, vehicle came to my family but either way it's gonna have to get fixed just one more thing and goody goody it's right on the body line too gotta love that don't want it to be too easy gotta have a little challenge i guess huh all right what's up there people hunter spoke riders here and as you know i've been working on this tahoe for what seems like forever it's been on the jack stands i unhooked the battery before i started all this but i was like oh let me uh i'm almost done with the brakes i'm pretty much done with them i just gotta do some adjustings i said let me uh start it up and get it going so i can uh, bleed the brakes you know pump the brakes do it the right way of course i go to hook up the battery and the power terminal went on fine but this negative terminal man this is it here it just would not it'll get tight and then when i try to tighten it it's kept popping loose popping loose popping loose finally i got it out of there and i don't know if you can see that but just that one say little silver part right about there it's flat and because of that one little flat spot this will not go on there it just will keep on just turning It'll get tight, it'll get snug, but then we go, I mean, get like hand snug, but then we go try to put the tool on and tighten it, it just slips and keeps spinning. Sometimes I'm messing with these old schools, it's always the simple things where I had to stop what I was doing, <laughs> get in the truck and drive all the way to O'Reilly's just to get this one little piece. So this right here is very pretty much the same thing. This is the new one. As you see, no flat spots, all the threads are fresh in there. Hopefully, it'll just spin right on there no problem it's raining outside it's hard to tell but it's a cloudy day here in arizona i didn't want to, i just got back from the gym that's what makes it that's what makes it bad i passed the auto parts store twice on the way to the gym and then coming home from the gym but i didn't know i needed this okay i feel like honestly i got lucky there it is that's a new one in there it's nice and tight the last thing you want is loose battery connections because that can cause a lot of problems all right, now that I got this hooked up, let me put the trickle charger on it and uh, take it from there, man. Okay. What's up there, people? Hunter Spoke Riders here, and it's Saturday. As you see, Tahoe is still not there. It is over there, and there's a lot going on today. I've been giving you highlights of what's been going on in December and January. I think we got two legs left in January as I'm filming this now. And as of now, Everything is painted and the brakes are completely done. Everything's brand new, brake suspension, and the whole nine yards. Y'all seen the front? I didn't really give you a lot of details in the back. It's a little dirty now because it has been raining off and on for almost a week and a half. The rear brakes are all on. Excuse the dirtiness. Everything's painted, everything's looking good. Both flares are off on both sides. Still gotta take the ones off in the front. But you get the idea. I'll show you under the hood here in a hot second. Let me show you the other side. There it is. All painted, all looking good. All brand new brakes, all ready to go. But it's still not back on the war on the road because I've come to the conclusion of what happened to my brakes. I tried to bleed the brakes and it was throwing a brake hole on the dash. 
And corporate, the corporate is, I believe, this master cylinder right here. Now, this master cylinder, not only did uh, repeatedly, like twice, and within this rebuild, I have forgot to put the top on and blew all the fluid out of it and had to add more fluid. Well, the last time I did that, I added more brake fluid, but I seen two pieces fall out of the brake fluid container. And I believe I tried to fish them out of there and I got a piece of foil from the brake, the brake fluid cap had fell in there and I got the foil, but I could have swore I seen plastic, a clear plastic piece, but I wasn't sure, but I couldn't find it. I thought maybe that it disintegrated in the brake fluid. So I went to commence to try to bleed the brakes and that's when it threw the cold. And I believe there is a clear piece of plastic stuck somewhere in this master cylinder and that's why uh that's why i had not drive it after i was done you know i just kind of bled it and limped it over here to this different area and then it rained off and on for like a week and a half so i haven't really been messing with it but in that week and a half i did order a brand new master cylinder once again good old rock auto for the win rockauto.com got it here quick fast in a hurry brand new ac delco master cylinder my next high hole video will be how to install a master cylinder. But I gotta do a little homework now. I gotta do some homework on how to bench bleed it and then get it on the car uh, on the Tahoe. So I just can't, this video is not gonna be about that, and this video is getting way too long anyway. So I'm just gonna end it right here. This is the update. I've been waiting on that. I got that. After this, I should have it be able to drive it and have it back on the road. All right, just let you guys give you a quick little update. It's an ongoing project, man. I thought I would have been done, but hey, sometimes stuff comes up. So be on the lookout if you want to know how to install a master cylinder. Uh, that'll be the next Tahoe video. All right, people. Honey Spoke Riders, signing out.